<laughs> this is the. <coughs> <laughs> This is the uh, this is the start of the podcast. Yeah, the, the the start of the podcast. This is going to be a wonderful one. Pickle is all kinds of full of stuff today. Not not as in like the bad way. It's, well, not sex toys no. or other things. But he's full of things. I don't know. It could be bad. It, I guess it's bad. Yeah, I don't know why. I, I don't know why I jumped to sex toys. I could have gone with food. I could have gone with. Yeah, anything else? It's a bit of extreme. Other stuff you put inside you. I, I was going yeah, with the went. metaphysical kind of like like psychological, full of yourself, but you just went straight for that. Do you know what? I'm just used to you and your sort of humour, <laughs> and I just sort of went. Oh, that's where Elston's going. I'll just get there first. <laughs> Always go to the holes. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Yeah. Anyway, I guess this is how we're starting this podcast. So, welcome, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, to War Gamers Anonymous with myself, Josh from the Pickle Jar. We've got Elston from Elston Nation, my esteemed co host mm-hmm. of many, many podcasts. Mm. Um, and today we've got a special guest uh, who's joined us at, well, nine o'clock in the morning uh, to chat nonsense about miniatures and chat shit. Uh, we've got Dave <laughs> from MS Paints. Yay! This is. Dave! This is the most unanonymous I've ever felt. I'm I'm assuming I'm not the first person to make that joke and think that was hilarious. It's not very anonymous, <laughs> is it? Yeah, yeah, fucking brilliant, mate. Yeah, yeah. No, I think you are actually the first person to mention that. I don't know why we're called War Gamers Anonymous. I think, Elston, you picked yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. I, it was supposed to be a play on, like, Alcoholics Anonymous and mm-hmm. stuff like that to make it seem like you, you come here <laughs> to kind of confess your sins and try to become a better person who is the... But yeah, no, it, it's just full of sex <laughs> jokes and <laughs> puns and yeah, it's, it's <laughs> all the sex, all jokes. the sex jokes. Um, <laughs> so sorry we've been a while, for, uh, a while for away. Sorry we've been away for a while. Um, I have been ridiculously busy this last sort of couple of months. Um, we'll get onto that in a bit. And who else has been busy mm-hmm. as well? Um, it's Dave's first time here, so technically he's not been away for a bit. He's he's here, he's on time, he's, he's with yeah. us. Um, <laughs> but yeah, if you enjoy what we do, leave us a like, leave us a comment, all the normal stuff, leave us a review if you're on a platform that allows it. Um, yeah, we'll get into it. So, uh, Dave, welcome to the podcast. Um, is it everything that you hoped and dreamed it would be? <laughs> and when we started on Facebook Messenger, I had, I had minor palpitations because I knew that we'd definitely be talking over each other. Um, and then we switched to Discord. <laughs> I'm okay now. My testicles have dropped from inside my lower bowels, and I am prepared for some good fun times. I'm going to talk over Elston anyway because he's he's small. Yeah, it's, it's, <laughs> <laughs> it's the same equivalent That's to it, like yeah. being outside on a really cold day for a man. Yes, yes, like, it was. Yeah, the, the, the like, shrivel was real. I like the yeah. I like the delay there between before the confirmation. <laughs> <It's> like, uh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Uh, so before we get on to today's um, <laughs> vague topic, um, <laughs> let's have a bit of a catch up because it's been a while um, and we keep saying this, we keep saying we're back, it's it, we're back now guys and then we keep just having more time off. Uh, mm-hmm. It's been mostly my fault this time so I do apologise. Uh, but Elston, what have you been up to while in the in the weeks while we've been away? Since we got Games Work- James Workshop cancelled, oh, yeah, we what did, have you been up we? to? <laughs> you got James Workshop oh, cancelled? Yeah. yeah, we'll get on to that in a bit. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. So the last the last episode that we did was the interview with Steve Conlin, mm-hmm. aka James Workshop, and then since our episode went out, he has not been allowed to do any other interviews. <laughs> now I don't know if it was specifically our interview that has made this impact, or if it's because he'd done a bunch of them that week, and it's right. just it happens that ours was the last one to go out. But he's not been doing anything else since. I haven't actually. Listened. James Workshop said that he can't do any more things outside of games workshop is that basically what it is uh yeah, yeah. kind of oh, yeah that's awkward isn't it hi yeah, yeah. We noticed you were having fun we noticed you were having some fun um uh i, I haven't really got time to draft a full email now so basically i'm going to sum it down to get fucked yours sincerely uh licensing <laughs> Uh, yeah, uh, I yeah. haven't listened to any of the other interviews with him, so I don't know if he's like just as crazy. But he kind of let loose on ours. Um, he mm. kind of towards the end of ours, or after we'd finished recording, he implied that if it was because at the end of ours, he basically called out um, uh, what, what, which author was it? it uh, was Richard the, Reed. Richard Reed. He called Richard Reed out for stealing his chips <laughs> and offered him a fight. <laughs> um, 
So, and we were joking, saying, oh, you know, that's bad. Yeah. And they were like, listen, if I'm going to get in trouble for any of the interviews, it's not this one. So that makes me wonder what he said oh, in the wow. interviews. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I, um, I've got to find them just to be like, what, what did you do? What did you say? He did share them all on his Twitter. Oh, I mean, mm-hmm. he might have had to delete the tweets now, but he did share them all originally because I kept seeing them come up. Um, oh, no. But yeah, so yeah. so yeah, we've not we've not done one since then. I think we've both just been recovering with the fact that we've just got rid of <laughs> Games Workshop's mascot. Um, yeah. uh, but Elston, other than other than destroying people's lives, what have you been up to? <laughs> That's just a daily occurrence in my life. Um, I I am I am in the fits of another heresy. Well, the uh, fits of three new heresy armies, um, and I. Is that just this morning? Oh yeah, like this week. Um, it's I, like we obviously we've talked about YouTube and stuff in the past, and like I, again, I am stuck with this thing where I'm building an army for something I want to do, and I'm thinking, how am I going to make content about this? I can't paint another mm. fucking army and just be like, ah, I, I'm painting another army. It's going to take two weeks, mm. and then it's done. It's the same regurgitated thing. So as all YouTubers do, we push ourselves to be a bit more stupid um, and a little bit more flamboyant. So I thought, okay, this time I'll try and do three armies in one. So I'm currently in the thralls of getting three armies ready to go at it at one hit. Mm -hmm. And I'm not sure how this is going to pan out for me, but that's kind of... Where I'm working on, I'm working on White Scars, which has been fun, or like Mongolian-themed space marines, mm-hmm. which is, I'm not sure if it's like culturally racist or if it's kind of a homage to them. I don't, it kind of the writes Mongolians, that line. it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. No one cares about <laughs> cultural appropriation from Mongolians. No, Skyrim's fine. Skyrim's fine, guys. No, it doesn't matter. <laughs> They're not one of the races um, people actually care about. <laughs> uh, and then I've got the Custodies, and then I'm going to be doing Sodor Auxilia as well. So there's a lot of words I've just said, which are not probably in the English language, but yeah, I'm going to be trying to hit three armies at once. Um, and I've been preparing for Chilcom, which will be... We'll talk a little bit more about uh, in the main topic. Mm. Uh, so yeah, we'll be getting got some swanky uh, pickle. Have I shown you the uh, lanyards I got made? I saw the picture on uh, the old whatever it were you posted uh, on probably, Instagram. Or yeah, something. something like that. Yeah. So interesting though. I made those. The rest of the guys of the like Chilcon crew didn't make those. I made them, so they're mine. So Phys- you physically made no, them? I, I paid for someone to do that. Oh, you're just lying then, are you? Yeah, I, I exchanged money for someone else to do something, which means I get I'm allowed to use the title "I made this." Um, mm. <laughs> um, so, but, yeah, yeah, no, I'm, I'm I'm looking forward to to putting around one around my neck. Yeah, because the actual organisers don't get one, but the people that come to the hobby clinic do get one. <laughs> It makes sense because it says hobby clinic on them, doesn't it? Yeah. So, but they look better than the standard blue. They do look nice. Mm. They do look nice. I remember thinking they look like a nice. Yeah, lanyard. it's mm. the most inconsequential thing that you could need at a hobby convention. But <laughs> I was... listen, I need something to dangle a badge around my neck so that people know vaguely mm. where I should be. I swear you were not going to say neck, and you were going to go with another word with them. <laughs> anyway, what I've been working on, um, Elston's Elston thinks he's really smart and really clever because he's doing three armies in in one yeah. go. But a couple of weeks ago, I finished an army in six hours and twenty minutes. Ah. Uh, which army was this? My new knight army. Nice. <laughs> the one, the one, the one knight, <laughs> the one man army. It's te- it, technically, it's an army. <laughs> Just like Sylvester Stallone's Rambo is a one-man army. So, like, you know, I started off this year when I did that uh, Horace video, yeah. and in that I was saying, "Oh yeah, I'm not going to do any new armies this year." Mm-hmm. Right. And then I've and then I've accidentally started two two new Age of Sigmar armies, a, a knight army, <laughs> and then I've got into Warcry, and I've now got four war bands. <laughs> <laughs> So you basically so, just we, flip we like, the terminology. Like, it's not an army, it's a war band. Mm. So, yeah, it works for them. It doesn't work for all the actual armies, though, because that's three armies that I've started. Yeah. Because I was I was under the intention, of, when I did this night in a day thing, 
I went and did it, and it was just, it was literally, it was just the the nerdiest dick swinging contest you've ever seen <laughs> between me and my friend. We've been on about going and doing it on store anniversary for years, going and just seeing if we can build the biggest model that they do and get it built and painted in a day, mm-hmm. like from 10 o'clock till five o'clock, mm-hmm. seven hours. Mm-hmm. And it's we've never managed to go and do it because it's always fallen on like a weekend where I've had Alfie or a week where we've had someone else on or we've we've not been able to afford it or whatever. And then this year it all just lined up perfectly and I was like, let's go and do it. So my only goal for the entire day was just to beat my friend, <laughs> just to get more done than he did. <laughs> <laughs> um, and when we got to the sort of six hour mark and I was like... I'm pretty much done. I'm literally just fucking about with little stuff now just mm-hmm. to make it look like I'm still painting, but I am done. Like, everything is together. It's all painted. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, how are you getting on? And they were like, oh, I've just finished spraying it. <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> um, but I, just, I just intended on it just being a one-off thing. I thought, oh, it'll look cool on a shelf. Like, you know, that's it. And then I went, out of curiosity, like, I think I was thinking, oh, maybe like three, 400 points, mm-hmm. maybe for a night. And I went, out of curiosity, how many points is this? And I was like, they were like, oh, it's like 600 plus points. I was like, oh. Mm. Well, at this point, I might as well just do another couple and then <laughs> that's an army, isn't it? Yes. So I'm kind of tempted at Chilcon to get there and do exactly the same thing on the Hobby uh, Clinic. Yeah. Okay, interesting. Well, now, remember, I said tempted. <laughs> mm. So I'm not c- committing to that. But I am kind of tempted to just do it on the day. Although I know I will be f- way more distracted at Chilcon than I, oh, would, yeah. than I was you, there. You, you, mm-hmm. You're going to have far less of a chance doing it at Chilcon. So I, I would probably say this as advice is, is maybe just stop talking about things you want to do in the future. And yes. just, <laughs> just do it. Because <laughs> that's how you got the Star Wars Legion mess. <laughs> Listen, there's nothing wrong with my... Look, it's, it's on my desk. Yeah, I know. It it's is been on, on your desk for a while. Underway. Yeah, well, I've been busy building life-size terrain, <laughs> which is the other thing that I've been working on. Yes, uh, since the last time we recorded, mm. is um, I've been I've built a twelve meter length of dry stone wall um, for the theatre group that I'm part of as a stage set for the show this week. Um, and how so? That's taken up a lot. Of and time. how has mm. the show gone so far? Show's gone fantastic so far. It's been pretty much sold out every night. They've had a stand innovation every night. Nice. Um, yeah, it's been it's been brilliant. I've been I've seen it four times now, um, which is why I'm very tired and full of cold now because I think my body's just gone. Nah, you're fucked, mate. Give up. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's what I've been working on. That that was a fun project to work on. The video's not performed quite as well as I thought it might do. Mm-hmm. Um, See, what I should have done is just, like, put a title somewhat like Games Workshop Shit <laughs> in a wall. And then people would have watched it. But um, I decided to go with a more accurate title. Um, <laughs> but the people that have watched it, and do you know what? I've got loads of comments from people at the theatre being like, oh, that wall looks good, doesn't it? Yeah. So there we go. Yeah. Yeah. It was. I, I, I really uh, enjoyed that video. I thought it was really, really good. It's... um. I thought it was fun enough. It was weird filming because obviously I weren't filming at home. I was mm-hmm. filming like in a massive industrial warehouse. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, lighting was an issue sometimes, but yeah, it was fine. Yeah. Um, it was fun. It was a fun project to work on. And it was just sort of that, um, you know, like like I said in the video, like I, I committed to doing it. I was like, oh, I could do that. Like I do a miniature, miniature stuff. Mm-hmm. So it, it's, it's got to be the same, just on a bigger scale. Mm-hmm. And then I forgot that I'd agreed to it because this was like last summer. <laughs> and then it got to like November and they were like, oh yeah, when are you going to build that wall? And I'm like, uh. Again, coming back to the talking about the future and probably just put the brakes <laughs> on it just just for a little bit to save yourself. Listen, listen, Elston, you have to live in the fast lane sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> and, and you just have to just go balls deep there's, or just don't bother. Living in the fast lane and then there's hooking yourself onto the bullet train and then waiting for the consequential reaction as it sets off. It's fine. I'm fine. I'm doing fine. <laughs> if I say fine one more time, believe me. Um, but no, it was a fun project to work on. Uh, I'm really happy we how it turned out. It was it was fun. Mm-hmm. Do you know what? It, what what's been really fun is um, it was showing the guys that came to sort of help to to do a lot of the legwork because um, obviously if I were doing it by myself, that'd have taken far longer than yeah, it yeah. is. 
um, is showing them like all the techniques and stuff that I know and use for miniature mm. stuff and then explaining why we're doing stuff. Because obviously they're used to like making sets for shows as like, you know, wood, hammer and nails, like putting flats up and stuff like that. And they're not used to something that's quite as artsy. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, I know that sounds like a proper wanky way to talk <laughs> about it. But like, when they were like painting, they were like, oh, we're going to get a big brush and paint it. I'm like, no, 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 no. We're going to dust it <laughs> with spray cans. And I explained oh, why. And I'm like, because you get loads more variety. Like rocks aren't just a flat colour. They are loads yeah, yeah. of colours yeah, yeah, yeah. that just move about. I said, yeah. so we'll just dust it and have loads of random colours in and it'll be fine. What? Um, yeah, it, it, I'm, I'm, it looked like you guys were having fun, to be honest with you, on yeah. that video. That's wh why I liked yeah. it. It looked like everyone was kind of like, this is fucking strange, but this is fun. <laughs> Honestly, you should have seen the look that I got when I got to the theatre and put it all up and then started applying static grass to it. <laughs> <laughs> because the guy, they were just like, what's that? I was like, oh, it's static grass. They were like, what's static grass? I was like, it's like what you use, because no point in me saying war armor, because, yeah. you know, these are all like actual men. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so I was like, it's like what you'd get on like model railways type stuff. Yeah. Right? Like, like that sort of what you use on that. And they were like, all oh, right. And like you could like it never occurred to him, and I was like, it just looks like moss though. Like on this, it looks like moss. Yeah. Um, and they were like, that looks brilliant. That mm -hmm. they were like, how did you think of that? I was like, because it's a thing that exists. <laughs> and I yeah. just sort of went, <laughs> I'll put it on. <laughs> Welcome to our lives. <laughs> yeah, um, but no, we're a fun project to work on, um, and hopefully, we're going to be able to hire that uh, wall out to other companies that are doing oh, the same nice. show that we've done or mm -hmm. just any show that needs a wall in it really um, cool I think that's going to be like a, a requirement when we pick our shows in the future like, has it got a wall in it no no I'm not doing it then because <laughs> um, we need to get as money's worth um, Dave what have you been up to recently I've waffled on for far too long that's alright it's it's that wall project is just, has just fascinated me in so many weird and wonderful ways just watching something right. that large come together just seeing the first piece of it then you're like, all right, Josh, yeah, yeah, okay, so that's going to be like, what, two metres? Nah, it's basically what Donald <laughs> Trump was trying to do, but with like an old Yorkshire stone wall uh, made out of foam. <laughs> uh, so you've actually... It's been, it's been, it, 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 it was fun to do. Yeah, yeah, it looked fun. Uh, what fucking hell, what have I been doing? Um, I'm working very slowly on my Stargrave crew, which is all kinds of fun and nonsense. Everything from um, cyberpunk anime chicks to dastardly and muttly to miniatures I printed too large. And I've just painted them all blue, and I'm going to say they're a race of giant people. Um, Ed 209, <laughs> there's a brain in a jar that rides around in a pushchair with cannons on it. You know, it's, my goodness, that's, what a liberating that's, project. That's, that sounds incredible. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's, it's basically... You um, know what? I, I bought the... <laughs> Go on. I was going to say it's basically kill team, but you're allowed to use your imagination, which is wonderful. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's uh, I, I used to play like, a lot of uh, Frostgrave, mm -hmm. um, which is the basically the fantasy version mm -hmm. of of Stargrave before Stargrave was a thing. And I absolutely loved Frostgrave. We had a, a group of people. We all played. I had miniatures from all sorts of places. Like I had loads of. Um, uh, Mont Monty Python Holy Grail miniatures nice. that I used for mine nice. uh, for like wizards and knights and stuff mm -hmm. uh, the wizards that I used uh, the wizard and the apprentice were both um, disc world miniatures nice. I absolutely loved them and then I had like a warhound and instead of a hound I had the luggage from disc world <laughs> <laughs> nice. um, and we had a hell of a lot of fun and I saw they were doing Stargrave I was like this looks like Frostgrave but sci-fi yeah. mm -hmm. And I started getting some stuff together that I want to use for my Stargrave uh, Warband, mm -hmm. but I've not actually like done anything on it, mm -hmm. as a lot of other projects. <laughs> okay. um, Future talking. I do I, I do own the rule book at least, though. I bought that uh, last year. So yeah. I do own the rule book, so I know how to build a, a, a team together. Yeah. Um, it's good. Yeah. Nice. I think to put a kill, uh, to put a, not a kill team, to put a crew together, it takes all of about half an hour if you have to rush it. So it's uh, <laughs> yeah, it's deliriously wonderful and functional. Um, apart from that, I've been doing well. The, the video title is called "Turn Your Old Toys Into Warhammer," but they're absolutely Stargrave spaceships, um, and it's all converted uh -huh. Buzz Lightyear spaceships, which are nice. 
a lot of them are in the right scale off the bat. Um, cool. And some of them, the the main dropship that I'm going to use is like a yeah a dropship for my crew. This was after I realized I had the the Prodos AVP aliens dropship, and I could have just fucking <laughs> used that. That fucking 300 quid piece of resin just sat on my shelf, leering at me. Could have just used that and got that done. But no, I'm converting a Buzz Lightyear dropship, um, completely rescaling the interior, lighting the interior with like fluorescent tubes and shit, like practical lights. And then I'm just looking at this aliens dropship like, I should have just fucking done that. Cause that's, <laughs> now that's another eight years until I actually paint that fucking thing. Well, I got to clear the mold lines off it and the gaps first, but other than that, uh... yeah. Uh, yeah, I've seen the Prodol resin stuff, and it's a bit like uh, on the large the miniatures things, are fine. The the, yeah, the the vehicles, but, the vehicles, holy shit! Like I can, I can fit comfortably a credit card in some of the gaps on the aliens <laughs> dropship. Oh wow! Um, Have you got the APC? Yeah, I got the. I mean, but, I, yeah. As, as I confess to you, um, since we are in Wargamers <laughs> Anonymous. Like when they had that closing down sale, I got everything barring a few models because I thought I'm never going to be able to get this again and assemble everything yeah. and put it in a box. And now I have this weird yeah. affliction where if I see anything AVP at an affordable price, I have to get it because <laughs> that is now my thing. And it, it's okay because Did you I... don't see it very much. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Did I ever tell you my, my story with AVP and the Kickstarter at all? I, is it similar to everyone else's story? Is it like a story? shit Harry Potter book? Uh, so, so, <laughs> AVP and this haunted Kickstarter. <laughs> so, uh, uh, were you around for, like, were you aware of the Kickstarter when it was running for AVP and the shit show that, like, followed suit after the Kickstarter I for it? I only found out about all that after I placed that colossal order on their website right. and my stuff didn't right. turn up for three months and I was like, oh, are they just not going to send me the stuff? Right, okay. <laughs> Right, yeah. So, yeah, that that's not uncommon for the way it worked. With the Kickstarter, they, they did it. It went fucking crazy viral, uh, like really, yeah. really high numbers. Three years later, no one had got their stuff yet. <laughs> mm-hmm. it, it, it was like, ugh. Um, my little story was I managed to score... <laughs> I got a bit of a double whammy on it because um, they did a thing where they turned up at Salute and they're like, if you turn up with your pledge and like a f- thing, we will give you what we've got mm-hmm. uh, at, there. And I was like, right. all right, cool. So I'll go to Salute, literally fighting my way to the front of the queue, got what I got because I think they had like six copies or something like oh, that. And there was sake, a queue right. of about 200 people. <laughs> I was like, um, so I got that, gave him a piece of paper, uh, and then they said, "Oh, if you if you want your stuff, you'll have to order mm-hmm. something else from the website, and then we'll ship it." And it was like, All right, "Okay, guys, you fucked up, costly, but I really want my stuff." Mm-hmm. Um, so they had like an online pledge thing, and it was they basically gone. Well, you haven't collected anything yet, and I was looked at the big pile of stuff I collected, and I was like, "Yep, huh." So I ordered something, and they sent it again. So I got right. double whammy of a lot of stuff. So I, I felt a little bit better for the fact for three years they were like, it's coming, it's coming. Oh, no, it's not. And you'll also have to pay for shipping from Spain or somewhere to get it. Right. So, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Which is why I've got so much, and which is why it's going to a new home at Chilcon as well. That's me, right? Yes, yes, I see. Excellent. <laughs> just checking that we are. Just checking. <laughs> <laughs> that you were still being patient with me. Yes, excellent. Yeah, that's yes, yes. It, it's such a, a weird, a weird little thing that company. And they're they're now. I think they split in half, and they fired all the people that were dicks and evasive and con men. And then the good guys set up Archon, who now basically make any miniatures ever that you've ever touched, apart from Games Workshop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. which is they do. They do need to sort out their like pricing strategy because we went to UK Games Expo and they were taking cash only. And you were like, guys, you're selling sets here that are like 120 quid or something like that. You could like, yeah. Anyway, yeah, the Yarkon stuff and there's, um, uh, they do the Dungeons and Lasers stuff, don't they? Yeah. 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 That That's really nice as well. 
Um, and the He-Man I keep stuff, looking yeah. at the Dungeons and Lasers stuff. Yeah, yeah. Um, dark. This, that's the only model that I have painted from Archon is uh, the He-Man Skeletor that they did. Mm. Not the ones that are from the, the actual game that they're doing. Mm -hmm. These were from a game that I think they were supposed to release and haven't done yet, or it got yeah. cancelled or something. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah, wasn't that a Kickstarter again or something like that? Yeah, it was... Uh, Fields of Eternia yes. oh, yeah, was yeah, the yeah. game. Yeah. And these were supposed to be like limited models that came out before that uh -huh. you could then use in the game. Yeah. So I got a Skeletor, Wendy got a He-Man, uh, Wendy got a Swift Wind, uh, go on, she on Swift Wind. <laughs> um, and they're, all, they're really nice models, uh, but then I never saw anything else for the game that they were supposed to go with. Because yeah. then when the other game came out, the the Battle Grounds, yeah, yeah. whatever it's called, yeah. Yeah. that came out, I'm like, oh, is this... These don't look the right size, and then there's yeah. other versions of these models that are for that game. <laughs> so I was, I was like, why have they then released this, but not the other? It, one? It's yeah. a strange um, business strategy, isn't it? For like yeah. two of the same game, but different sizes, and one comes out and one doesn't. And yeah, yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, speaking of UK Games Expo mm -hmm. and uh, conventions in general, see how see how I did that segue. Ooh, that was good. Nice. Nice. Nailed it. Um, <laughs> to, yeah, I nailed it. No one will even notice that we're switching to the, to the main topic now. Um, let's let's switch to the main topic. Wonderful. Um, today we're talking about conventions, gaming conventions, <laughs> get-togethers, expos, <laughs> car boot sales. <laughs> um, yeah. Honestly, car boot sales. Yeah, amazing. Mm. Hidden gems everywhere. You get some absolute bargains. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, we're uh, the, the well, we're all going to be at Chillcon in about three weeks. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, um, but yeah, just conventions in general. Uh, Elston, this is your idea for mm. the topic, so I'm going to let you lead off because I don't really know where I'm going with this. <laughs> That's absolutely fine, old Capitan. Um, so yeah, I am. I'm actually. I'm doing a video at the moment, so I am actually using Wargamers Anonymous to help me create said video, which is my mm. own selfishness. I'll get that out of the way while, before we get started. Um, Son of a bitch. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't sign anything. <laughs> but the, the, the concept was is um talking about conventions. Now we did a we did a uh episode on the UK Games Expo and our experience mm. there. Uh but I wanted to mm. talk more about the actual the going to conventions. So not just UK Games Expo, but like going to other conventions and also wargamer meetups. Uh, I don't know if that's correct term. A gathering of war gamers. Mm. So it could be like you're having uh, a games day where you're just coming in and everyone's playing a particular game and stuff like mm. that. And the, the idea was, is like a question is, are they actually any good? Which the answer is pretty much yes, but there's some, you can sometimes attract the dicks. Uh, usually <laughs> though, it tends to be when, when you do conventions and stuff, either if, if the convention's big enough, said dick can go somewhere else and it's big enough that you can avoid dicks. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't know if that's a, that's what she said moment or not, but <laughs> anyway, <laughs> um, if it was, I would have said it. Yeah. I, I, I was, yeah. I, I was about to say it was a stretch, and then I, I realised I'm digging myself a more proverbial smutty hole. But um, <laughs> that is uh, what she said. To be fair, yeah, <laughs> there you go. That's how it's done. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, so, and, and the idea is, uh, I'm doing a video on uh, are wargaming conventions healthy for you, and I wanted mm. to talk a bit about it with you guys as well because I think there's more to it than just yes and or no because uh on the negative side of things con flu is a real fucking issue and i think it's the sacrifice everyone makes of so yeah that's the thing it depends when you say are conventions healthy for you it depends what you mean by healthy well, that, if you mean like it's in terms of your actual health you're going to go there you're going to touch a lot of things and be near a lot of people and mm -hmm. probably get gems from them yeah. you're going to eat Pro some sort of shit greasy food from a wagon outside <laughs> or you're going to pay extortionate money for a shit sandwich from somewhere inside the convention. Yep. Oh, is there supposed um, to be food at these things? generally... <laughs> 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 which generally isn't... Um, 
isn't the best. Mm -hmm. um, True. So, like, in terms of like, your actual health, like, you can take precautions and stuff, but it's kind of unavoidable that you're probably going to pick something up mm -hmm. or have a bit of an off day from your usual eating plan. Mm -hmm. If you talk about health in terms of within your hobby, I would say absolutely yes, because conventions are one of the best ways to find new stuff. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The problem with, um, and we've all experienced this, uh, the problem with like finding stuff like on YouTube and stuff is that Games Workshop and Warhammer, unfortunately for better or for worse, corner the market. So it's hard to find videos on other things, mm -hmm. on other game systems that are like decent because people just either don't cover them because they don't get the views. Um, and also like it's one of those things where you don't always know what you're looking mm -hmm. for until you see it. Yeah. Yeah. Like you might not necessarily <clears throat> be looking for some things or you might not know what to search for. Mm -hmm. Um but like I like going to conventions so that I can sort of scout out all the smaller independents and like just pick up random models from companies that I do know about, and I might just see a model on a shelf and be like, "Fucking hell, that's cool!" Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> and like pick up random stuff like that. Or to be honest, a lot of it is like um, I don't know if you guys get this, but I I like get really bad like impulse buying mm. at conventions, <laughs> and it'll be stuff that I have happens. seen. <laughs> It'll be stuff that I know exists, and I'm like, I could order this online mm -hmm. at any point. It's not a rare thing. It's not like a limited thing. Mm -hmm. There's no reason for me to buy it today, apart from the fact that I can go, here's some money, and now I've got a box straight away, mm -hmm. which is always more satisfying than ordering yeah. something online. Mm -hmm. um, so like last year at Chilcon, I walked away with uh, a DeLorean from Crooked Dice. Absolutely, got to be done. And the... Yep. And the uh, fourth Doctor box from Warlord. Nice. Um, which now I know, I wish I'd bought more of them because they've now just discontinued them completely. Uh, um, so you're just going to like put them up on eBay to make some money? Yeah. No, I'm going to paint them <laughs> at some point. <laughs> no, if you if you were able to get more boxes. Oh, if I, no, I want I want to get more of the collection. I want to get more oh, of the boxes right. so I can okay. paint them. And have, I, I, Doctor Who is... Uh, one of my favourite shows ever. Mm -hmm. um, so like, yeah, I want to, I want to paint them. And it's one of them things where I keep meaning I'll buy them at some point. I'll paint them. I'll buy them at some point. And now it's too late. So I'll have to mm -hmm. try and find them secondhand on eBay or something. Yeah. So to try to try and add in a little bit on the the health factor as well is there is an element of health which actually does is healthy for you, which is not really accounted for. Is that you spend most of the day on your feet walking mm -hmm. around. So you're actually going to get a hell of a lot of steps in on that day. So it, it, you are actually doing a little bit of exercise. Right, it, it probably gets countermanded by the greasy fat cheeseburger that you have to eat from the mm -hmm. potential food van that doesn't explode on the M5 on the way up. But <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, Chilcon 2022, no food. Um, yeah, and... I, th I think for adding on, on to the impulse buy things, I, I know a lot of conventions, and Dave, we, we spoke a little bit about this, the bargains mm -hmm. that you get from traders and mm -hmm. bring and buys, and I, I still don't know if they sorted out the bring and buy to do it properly at Chilcon or something. I'm not, I'm not sure they've done it right. I did ask him to do it right, but mm -hmm. uh, I don't know. Um <laughs> but yeah, it's usually traders will probably offer some kind of deal because mm -hmm. they they've they've had to pay to make put a stall up there. So ideally, mm -hmm. they want to kind of sell product and stuff like that. So yeah, yeah. Um, uh, Dave, you went to Vapnapak not too long back, didn't you? Vapnapak, yeah, so, yeah. So th that's this is, the one. Not yeah, it's it, it's a weird semantic thing. Because I just realised that a modern Comic Con and a modern war game show are very much similar things, right down to people fucking dressing up on the day. And uh, I used to go with my dad to war game shows a lot, and they were called war game shows or they were called trade shows. And right. I enjoy them very much now that I'm back into the hobby, but yeah. I absolutely despise Comic Cons. Like, I. <laughs> <laughs> with a with a visceral passion, would rather eat my own teeth than go to a comic con. Uh, I mean, I've had bad experiences with comic con. Either like I work a stall at them with um, 
uh, the the game shop in in York that I I still do cover shifts at, and I <laughs> have just absolutely uh, after about ten minutes I am done with engaging with other so called humans, and I'm just <laughs> angry. Uh, uh, and the I, problem with um, the problem with comic cons is it's just all the same stuff. It's, it's like it's yeah. like oh there's your nerdy t-shirt we dice on it oh mm-hmm. there's your Funko pops yep there's your like, there's your tab. it's all the same stuff repeated there's there's more it's tab. like a shit buffet yeah yeah uh, and the, the, oh, as well the amount of comic cons that are actually run by sex offenders like actually <laughs> registered sex offenders that you can just fucking Google um, and they're just there and their pictures there and you see them walking around comic cons and all the staff are like. 18 year old volunteers from the local university and you're like mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. this is fine is it okay okay we get to dress up one day a year we'll, we'll let this slide we'll let this guy go uh, and you know it, not to name any names but like at the the local York Comic Con the guy who's doing my t-shirts the promoter punched out his dad for parking his van in the wrong place <laughs> <laughs> and I was like bro Bro, I think I'm definitely done with Comic Cons now. I've not been to one in three years, but I think I think just me, the tenuous connections with people I know and their dads, their elderly fathers, getting sparked out in a car park. I think I'm done with Comic Cons, um, but not war game shows that happen to have con in the title. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, it, yeah. I, 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 I've not been to a Comic Con yet. Um, I don't really feel the need. Like there's not no. nothing for me there. Mm-hmm. Um, <clears throat> I don't know. Like, like I said, the uh, like the I've been to I've been to some really really good like comic cons or, or you know they're not really comic conventions anymore, are they? Because no. it's more just general nerd conventions. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Because it's like it's not it's not comic books. It's like mm-hmm. film, TV, like anime whatever mm-hmm. but i've been to some really really good ones mm-hmm. um where i've been and like got to meet people mm-hmm. um my favorite story is when i went to one where i, I met uh, uh sylvester mccoy and colin baker and nice. peter davison mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Cool. um because I, I took and i took some of my dvds to get signed mm-hmm. and i got there and i'm like oh there they are they sat behind the table mm-hmm. and one day we're like hey go on then and i'm like what do i do <laughs> she's like what do you mean what do you do you go up to him and i'm like yeah but what do I what do I do? Do I do I speak to them all together? Do I do them individually? Should I mm-hmm. just go and speak to them? I'm like, no, no, I don't know what to do. So I stood and waited at the opposite side of the room and waited for a queue to form mm-hmm. so that I could go and join the back of the queue and then observe what other people did so that I knew what to do when I got to the front. And I'm like, if that is not the most British thing ever, <laughs> I will not so talk British. to you until there is a queue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I will wait for a queue so that I can join it. Mm-hmm. Um <laughs> And it weren't like I was waiting a short amount of time. I must have been waiting like 15 minutes for a queue. Mm-hmm. Just stood there. Yeah. They must have clocked me at the other side of the room. Like, what's he fucking doing? Yeah. With, his hands, with his hands in his pants. Um, but no, I've had some really good yeah. uh, comic conventions. But then, yeah, a lot of them are just... If there's no, like... The things that I go for are, like, talks mm-hmm. or, like, to, to opportunity to see people, mm-hmm. like, uh, actors and stuff, like, you know, celebrities. Um if it's just a general, because essentially what most of them are now is just a big bring and buy sale. Mm-hmm. But like I say, with the same like Funko Pops and T-shirts and like dice and mm-hmm. like, and it's like, it's cool, but I can order all this online. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. And I don't, so I, I don't need to just walk around 80 stalls all selling the same yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yes. Whereas at least with wargaming conventions, mm-hmm. you get different vendors and different companies that sell Obviously, their own mm-hmm. miniatures lines. You get you get a lot that you know. You'll get some of the stores that'll go. They'll sell the same things mm-hmm. as the other stores. Stores. Mm-hmm. So like we, when we were at Games Expo, there were a few different stores that were selling. You know, Warhammer stuff. There was a few mm-hmm. different stores selling Star Wars Legion. Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. but then you've got all the independent ones, and you've got the smaller companies and stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, tell you what surprised me at Games Expo, um, not so much at Chillcom, but at Games Expo was how many three D printing. Mm-hmm. Like company stalls, there were like Titan Forge were there. Um, but like yeah. the thing is, when three D printing companies actually have their models out on like the shelves, you're just like, oh, okay, now I want, it. now I want. It. Yeah, yeah. Whereas seeing a three D render a lot of the times is a bit like, I don't know if I'm becoming a bit acclimatized to it. Of like, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. <laughs> 
I've seen I've seen a lot of renders. It looks cool, but I know mm-hmm. the hassle of actually printing it. But if someone's like, "Here's a 3D," yeah. I'm like, oh, mm-hmm. "Give me!" Yeah, that's it. Um, the other the other aspect I wanted to talk about health with uh, wargaming conventions. I don't know if you guys have experienced this. Uh, is more to do with mental health um, mm-hmm. in the aspect of. Uh, you guys are probably getting it as well as I get it now, especially with ChillCon mm-hmm. um, and also being YouTube content creators, is mm-hmm. people coming and talking to you and interacting with new people mm-hmm. and getting that kind of variety of life uh, mm-hmm. instead of because obviously uh, hobbying can be a relatively independent. Uh, thing to do. A lot of times mm-hmm. we can sit in our own bubbles doing stuff, mm-hmm. whereas. In those scenarios, we are almost pretty much forced to talk to other people. And mm-hmm. I, I say forced in the, the lightest terms of <laughs> we're not dicks, so we're not going to tell people to fuck off and leave me alone. So, um, yeah. Don't speak for me. <laughs> I was yeah, say, I'm bringing, everyone, a, I'm bringing a, to- a PayPal debit card reader. Like, people have to tap <laughs> it before they can talk to me, guys. <laughs> Pound a minute. Absolutely. Just have it sort of attached to Hector, just sitting there like. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, that was one of the things I found, like <clears throat> after, especially like after UK Games Expo uh, and after ChillCon, you're mm. quite mentally exhausted. And I think that's a mm-hmm. wonderful thing. Because you sort of, <laughs> you go to sleep that evening, you're like, fuck, that was a long day. But then you wake yeah, up the yeah. following day and it's just all the random things that have happened, especially like you guys mm-hmm. picking up your random friend. Um, mm-hmm. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> mm. I wonder if he's going to be there this year. We should we should organise a meeting. <laughs> to quote Sean the Dead, he's not my friend, he's a fucking idiot. <laughs> <laughs> But no, I, I know what you mean about the, the mental exhaustion thing. Because, mm-hmm. like, not so much after game. Well, after Gamers Expo, it was more because I'd been there for two mm-hmm. days. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And like, the day before had been a nightmare yeah. mm-hmm. getting the stuff there that I was <coughs> the reason I was going. Um, but Chillcom more so because, like, it sounds like a complaint. It's not really, but it's just more an explanation as to why we feel the way that we do. Mm-hmm. Um, and, like,. And I imagine Dave probably gets this more than me with because obviously your like channel is a lot bigger and you're probably more recognizable. Mm-hmm. Um like you, you speak to people all day and you kind of not that not that any of us in particular have mm-hmm. a false personality online. Mm-hmm. Like we are generally just ourselves, but mm-hmm. we do it, it's not a lie to say that when you do videos and stuff, you have to kind of turn yourself up a bit. Like, yeah, it's yeah. like you're yourself, but like on 11. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, because obviously when it comes across on video, it takes a bit of energy out and stuff. Mm-hmm. So then when people come and speak to you at like conventions and stuff, you kind of have to be that that online version. Like you have to be the YouTube version of yourself when you're speaking to them. Yeah, yeah. Because that's kind of what people expect and it's what people want. Mm-hmm. But then you don't realize it at the time. But then by the end of the day, like I got this with Chillcon, I was just mm-hmm. like, by the time I'd be for food and that, I was like, I am done. Like, yeah, I just yeah, want yeah. to go home. Yeah. yeah, my social battery is drained. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> if anyone else speaks to me, I don't know what I'll do. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think that's a bad thing. I don't. I think it's a bit like going for a big run, and like mm-hmm. you get back and you are apps. What's that like? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, I'm trying to think of some long-term physical exercise that you would have done, which would have completely shattered your body. Listen, what I do <laughs> <laughs> in my own time <laughs> all day. Long. No, I know what you mean though. It is, it is, it is kind of rewarding because you do, you like yeah. you say, you do get to the end of the day and you sit on and like the next day and you'll be like, oh, that was really cool. Like mm-hmm. I got to speak to all these people and do all this stuff. Yeah. But yeah. yeah, at the time, it's like at, at the time, it's completely, completely knackering. Uh, like I think yeah. I yeah left Vapn Attack. Uh, I mean, I had a, an all right time, but it took me 45 minutes to get from the entrance to the toilet to have a piss, and I really needed a piss. Um, <laughs> and I got halfway through past the hook, because I was meeting friends from the local York community as well, people that I actually already knew, so it was nice to catch up with them. But, you know, just as you're about to go into the toilet, someone's like, oh, mate, yeah, 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 yeah. You're like, mate, I'm, I'm 36, I gotta go. 
I gotta go now. Like I'm <laughs> this this ain't gonna hold itself. I gotta go, mate. Uh, my my prostate is throbbing. Uh, it's Carly Mar time with this prostate. I gotta go. Um, and I, I think I left the convention very done in the in the same way that Josh describes it. Is I'm I'm fucking done now. Uh, I you know you, at the time you every time you meet a new person you're like yeah this is this is lovely this is. Um, this is kind of what I wanted was to gain a social aspect out of it. And it's only at places like this where you meet a steady kind of stream of people that talk about themselves and they introduce themselves and then they talk about, you know, they like your stuff. Um, I And then they show you pictures of stuff that they've done off the back of a tutorial that you've done. And it's it's really nice because it's really outside of YouTube comments. It's the only place that you get. Validation's a strong word, but like validation at 25% opacity really is what I'm talking yeah. about. Yeah. Um, and then the next like day you had- think about it and you process it all and you're like, oh, yeah, okay, cool. Yeah, that's – no, that was a really good yeah. experience and I'm glad I did that. I am fucking knackered though. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's one of the things as well because like a lot of people, like they don't like it when you say stuff like that, that you, know, you get the validation. It's like we make videos. Mm-hmm. We want those videos to get watched. Mm-hmm. We obviously want people to tell us that we've done a good job. Mm-hmm. Don't stop us being awkward about how we react yeah. when people tell us that they like our content. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I still don't know. I still don't, under, I don't. I don't know what the correct response is. Yeah. When someone says, oh, I really like your videos, I'm sort of like, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't know why, but thank you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. My because it, it's yeah. it's a weird it's a weird thing because I've I've come from a a film and marketing background. So my approach when someone gives me a compliment or asks me about something is to reverse it into a question and to ask about them. It's just instinctual is how you make networks and connections with mm. people in an egocentric industry is to immediately ask a question and be enthusiastic about what they do. So when people say, oh, I really loved your stuff, and then you stop and then you talk to them and you don't release the handshake and you're like, cool, so what are you into? What are you doing? What are you buying today? What have you bought so far? And they're like, ah, ah, ah. Yeah, yeah, now you're on the spot, brother. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. I'm going to remember that for chill Yeah, yeah, yeah will, Just don't I release will, the handshake um, and just keep asking questions. Just keep asking <laughs> and don't blink. Just grip a little bit tighter. How how long how long <laughs> do you do this for? Is this like a, a few minutes or is this like half an hour or twenty seconds of the handshake is enough and then just don't stop asking questions after that. You can you can get them for two hours. They'll never just talk to you. Just follow them around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what are you doing now? <laughs> is this your girlfriend or your mum? Have you got any pets? <laughs> What's your favourite shape? <laughs> What's your favourite dinosaur? <laughs> Why is it not Stegosaurus? <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, El- you Elsa had a laugh when we were going around Games Expo. Him and uh, Wendy were taking Mickey I, out of me it was, all it was, day. It was hilarious because obviously I'm a content creator and I've, I've witnessed it a fair few times mm-hmm. and people were stopping Josh like, oh, Josh! And me and Wendy were like, look at each other like, so we now have to stop where we were going to and wait. Mm-hmm. So we we just like, all right, okay, every time this happens, let's strike a pose like an anime mm-hmm. characters and just be in the background. So every time someone came along to Josh, just this man and this woman in the background would be like, yeah! And just, lo- yeah, like, yeah, 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 yeah. Well, Josh is trying to like have a serious conversation. There's two people being like really weird behind I mean, him. Serious converse, serious conversations are a little bit of a stretch. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's people telling me that they like my videos about toy soldiers. It's not really serious. Yeah. And to be honest, that just gave me the spark of like today is I'm going to mess with Josh Day because mm-hmm. luckily I, I'm kind of in that wonderful category of like some people might recognise me, but I'm a little bit too odd that people will actually come up and approach me a lot of the time. Mm-hmm. So. So I just get to have fun and muck around. Um, mm-hmm. And like, especially when Pickle was having trouble hearing, uh, mm-hmm. I just start shouting or almost shouting in a loud voice like Matt Berry. I'm like, Pickle, <laughs> look over there. There's some toys. Let's go have a look. Just, just to clarify, I don't have problems hearing. I have problems processing the information that I do hear. <laughs> in 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 my right ear, it's a little bit like I'm fine normally. But then when you're at a convention where there's a lot of noise mm-hmm. anyway, and then someone's on that side talking to me, I can't I can't filter. Mm-hmm. Yeah, 
the noise out. And I tried explaining that, and Elson just assumed that I was <laughs> so just start shouting louder. <laughs> Elston, I'm not deaf. Uh, I just don't fucking care. Shush. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, how, how would you uh, say... Because obviously we're, we're coming from a, a content creator background. Do you think conventions... I mean, the obvious answer is yes. Um, do you think they're good for just regular punters? Do you think the mental health benefit... You know, just to get out for, I say, I say that like we're all fucking shut-ins, but I suppose you're you're in a room where there's 400 people who are your tribe and they're people yeah. that you can strike up yeah. a conversation with. Anyone in that room, you can go, let's talk about MDF kits. What do you think? How do you see them? Or what's your favorite yeah. this? What's your favorite that? And you can have pretty much an intricate discussion with anyone at any point, really. See, you can, mm. but the problem is, is that, People, <laughs> this is a bit of a generalization, but people that do our sort of hobby mm. generally aren't the most outgoing, mm. go and talk to strangers mm. people. Like, I find it really difficult because, like, contrary to popular belief, I've told this, I tell this to everyone, no one ever believes me. Mm. I am a massively anxious, mm. nervous, shy person, mm. and I just pretend like I'm not mm. all the time. Yeah, yeah. Like, not just for YouTube, as in, like, just normal life. I just pretend not to be. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I So, like, I, I find it difficult sometimes to speak to people, but I have to just push myself and do it. Mm-hmm. But I think it, a lot of people... Yeah, well, well, I think it's great for, well, punters to kind of tag on the back of what you're saying, Pickle, because it bursts the enamoring bubble that can happen from watching content creators or um, mm-hmm. buying products from a certain company you might get a, like a mental image of, oh, the, the, I buy loads of these products. This person must be raking it in. They've probably mm-hmm. not got time to talk to me or anything like that. Or this mm-hmm. content creator, like he's got this many views and stuff. And you go and talk to him and you're like, I am just a dude. I shit like everyone else. So just <laughs> like basically that, that, that was what I got told when I started YouTube. There was a guy that was pretty big mm-hmm. and I, I met him and I was like, oh, it's really cool to meet you. And he's like, dude, I shit just like everybody else. So, yeah. And it just burst my like illusion mm-hmm. bubble of people. And I was like, okay, yeah, you're a human too. Um, mm-hmm. And nine times out of 10, They'll want to talk to you, and the people mm-hmm. are nice. I say nine times out of ten, there is that the dick that shows up at some point. But I think it's, <laughs> but you know, I, I just think it's great. I, I, for that I kind agree. Of thing. I think it's, yeah, I think it is good because like it's, it's the it's whether people take it up or not. Is the opportunity is still there to speak to other, other exactly. people, mm-hmm. and like and more like um, probably more the the stalls and mm, the sellers, right. like more than just the random other punters, like getting a chance to go like and buy something from the stall from a smaller independent Mm -hmm. um, and chat with the person there because the person manning the stall is more than likely the person the person that makes them or Mm -hmm. someone within that company that has that Mm -hmm. knowledge and stuff Um, and that's kind of cool to get insights on that Mm -hmm. and stuff so here's here's the the question that I want to ask Mm. Uh, forget you know your, your regular punters like look at it from our point of view as content creators, mm. do you still, because I do, get the, um, when you make the decision like, all right, I'm going to this convention, it happens once a year, I should probably make some content on it, even though you know mm. that it's probably not going to get any views mm-hmm. because mm. It, reviewing an <clears throat> event that's already happened that people can't go to because it's in the past, mm. mm-hmm. it's kind of pointless because if they were that bothered, they'd have gone. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but but you but in your head you're sort of like yeah but opportunity mm-hmm. yeah but content I, I think putting it a little bit of it in the journey of something else is like yeah. mm-hmm. for example if you picked it up at the convention if you can get a little bit of footage about that and not mm-hmm. make it about yeah. the convention itself I think mm-hmm. is a winner um, because yeah it's it, like someone's like oh, I went around the UK Games Expo and I bought these you're like great Wonderful. It's a two-hour video when they were talking fantastic. of just someone, just someone filming stalls, just someone filming yeah. other people's business while they're buying things. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. it's kind of almost stalkerish profile. I mean, you kind of get mm. to that, and you're like, mm. um, but yeah, overall, <laughs> I would say conventions, good. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it, this conversation is going to help me massively with the video I'm doing because I'm basically doing a video about this, um, mm-hmm. uh, more in the uh, comical sense of probably focusing on con flu and the smell that can happen at convention. Like, have you got like just before we drop off the subject, have you guys experienced the death smell that happens at conventions sometimes, where? I take, uh, I have a, a deodorant no, and, and body uh, No, no, I'm not, I'm not talking about you. Mm-hmm. I'm talking about what... No, no, but I, I have it, and whenever I smell, if I'm going around, <laughs> I, I have a people. set that I keep just for when I'm going to... No, don't spray them. I spray myself near them, <laughs> hoping that they'll take the hint. You're right, yeah, because, yeah. yeah, it's a... Oh, hello, Compressor, you woke up. Um, uh, <laughs> yeah, there, there is that point where you're walking around, mm-hmm. and... You get the whiff, and it's, it's, uh, and it hits you like a uh, wall. It's, it's the the primal the primal instinct that caveman man must have smelt when they're like, "This is danger. This is death. I need to run mm-hmm. now." And like mm-hmm. that instinct, you're like, "Something really bad has happened." In <laughs> when you're, and you when look you're just walking who it, and it, you're. Your mid conversation, and all of a sudden you're like, "Yeah, I'm really, really into color forge cans." And then out of nowhere, you just have a gag reflex as someone passes you. Yes. Like, <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. There's yeah. Uh, I'm just, yeah. yeah. When that smell hits you, you're like, "Right, okay. Let's just let's just quietly relocate." I don't. <laughs> I don't have a massive problem with it because obviously my channel Fuck. is about. Um, differently abled persons and that covers mentally differently abled and physically sure, differently sure. abled so it's like okay right I'm cool yeah I'm not yeah. gonna I'm not gonna make a big deal out of that you know some people are a certain yeah. way and they just they just don't have that in there that little bit of lizard brain that says yeah. keep yourself clean it's not working that's fine you do your thing uh yeah so but it can be I, I just I just move like... it can it can be one of those moments where like the death smell where there's a reaction where you gag and you, you need, suddenly need to go to the bathroom. You need to go outside. A lot of the times I, thankfully I vape or smoke depending how healthy I feel. Right. And I'm like, Oh, I feel like going for a cigarette now. And my partner gives me the look and then the smell hits her and she's like, Oh God. Yeah. We need to go for a cigarette. Okay, yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's the best way to get out of there guys. Start um, smoking. Yeah. <laughs> um, obviously with, with Chillcon being the next convention that, well, mm. presuming the next convention that all, we're all mm. going to be at together and, and doing yeah, stuff. Yeah. Um, are you guys looking forward to it? You excited? Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, yes. I've just had um I've just had a look on the website, but I can't see the the link for stall holders. Doesn't seem to be uh, so Go to go there. to the what's on, and then uh, yeah. And there's a traders yeah. one, and I click on trader list, and it doesn't do anything. Oh, wonderful! I'll go talk to him about it. We'll try and get that. I'll, I'll get him to fix. He might be updating it. Also, you might want to you might want to let him know that it says Chilcon Sheffield 2022. Yeah, that is the, he, is the header he, image. Yeah, I, I've, trying to get him to do something new it's just like kicking a dead horse it's just like come on dude like i'm trying my hardest here so um to kind of advertise it like it is it's a wonderful thing as well and just if content of people that view any of our content uh want to come down and meet us uh, we're going to be there. Uh, I effectively run a thing called the Hobby Clinic there. Uh, this is just for mm-hmm. people maybe new to the podcast who don't know. Uh, the Hobby Clinic is an area of the convention where there are no traders. It's just a couple of painting desks. Um, we'll have some professional painters, myself included. Mm-hmm. I like to call myself a professional for some reasons. Um and if you want, if you need any hobby advice, you can come talk to us. Uh, but between one and two, uh, we, we're having uh, some meet and greets. So, and Pickle is pissing himself off. Sorry, I'm just I'm just look, going through the website, and I've just got onto the hobby clinic page. And obviously, they've they've got the photos for all the people that are, that are doing the hobby clinic on YouTube. Yeah, stuff. yeah. Um, and I've just seen the image that they've picked for Dave. Is that the yeah. grumpy one? Yeah, 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 yeah. They've picked that. Brilliant. <laughs> Absolutely brilliant. Everyone else is like, oh, really welcoming, really friendly. Dave's just like. <laughs> uh, yeah, so there is a, there's a meet and greet between one and two. Uh, Josh, mm-hmm. Dave, uh, 
uh, Ben from Penchy's Hobbies and Pat and Peachy from the painting phase are going to be there. So if you want to come along and say hello. And you. Sorry? Are you going to be there I, as well? I'm, I'm there all day. Uh, like, you can mm. catch... Yeah, but I mean, are you going to be with us doing the I, meeting and I, meeting? I'm basically just going to try and keep you guys comfortable. So I will try and find some cushions. Uh, like, I... <laughs> Like it's, this is for you guys. I'll, I'll cushion. Are we sitting on the floor like primary school? Yeah, style? yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just like in a, cer- in a, a carton of milk and a cookie, and then you can- oh, <laughs> do you know what? If that doesn't happen now, Austin, <laughs> yeah, I'm yeah. gonna be severely disappointed. Um, my so yeah, you can come bro. along, meet him for it. <laughs> yeah, where's my milk, bro? And it's got to be one of them little cartons that you get at prices. Yeah, you've got to like, try and open it I a don't weird, want, weird I, way, like pulling Yeah, I don't want a glass. I want, I want a carton of milk that's going to spill everywhere when I try and open it. <laughs> um, but yeah, we'll, we'll be there all day. Uh, Josh, I think you're joining me with possibly doing the painting side of things, so I'll be there. Yeah. yeah. To be fair, we'll just be hovering around anyway, so mm-hmm. if you want to come say hello. If Dave's... Well, that's it. I'll be there all day. Yeah. So. So uh, if if we look like we're t- intensely looking at buying something, just give us a minute to like buy said thing, and then we'll, <laughs> then we'll talk. Um, but yeah, it's it's going to be a wonderful thing. Um, hopefully, we've got food vans this year. I really fucking hope so because mm-hmm. <laughs> god damn it! Uh, apparently, it's a Korean food van and a chippy bacon butty van. So I don't know how nice. good chippy bacon butty. Yeah, I. It, it, yeah, it's the guy that's van exploded on the M5. I think it's sorted now, so it's going to be... It's not on yeah, fire anymore. No, as far as I know. It's always, it's always a good start. Yeah, so that's that's the intention. Um, <laughs> yeah. The mead guy's back this year, which I'm really looking forward to. There's a guy that sells mead. Nice. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's like a... And it's designed in like an old-style, ye old tavern-style thing. So, mm-hmm. um, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's it's gonna. Is it what's his what's his what's his van called? Uh, uh, what the Mead guy? Is it just called the Mead? Band? I can't remember. It's like Ye Old Tavern or something like that. I think it's called. Um, that shit. It should be called the Need for Mead. <laughs> nice, very good, <laughs> <laughs> wonderful. <laughs> I'm gonna tell him. Um, <laughs> so yeah, first of April, 2023. Mm. Uh, contrary to the website. Yes. Um, Come and join us at Chilcon in Sheffield, Ecclesfield. Yes. Um, and if you're around the night before, a lot of people are like coming up or coming down the night before. Mm-hmm. Um, we're having a get together for food and war cry. Um, mm. So they're crying so over you, war. <laughs> yeah, if you're around, feel free to come and join us. Are you coming down on the day, Dave, or are you coming down? I am coming down on the morning, yes. Um, I've managed to secure oh, right, a lift okay. with. Um, some patrons that actually live in York because there's a is there a rail strike on that nice. day? Feel free to cut that out Something. if you want people to buy Probably. their tickets first and then figure out they can't get there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It probably is. I think was there a rail strike? There's always a Last rail strike. Year. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. To be fair, yeah, there's always <laughs> one. Um, but yeah, so all right, fair enough then. Uh, we'll we'll probably end up going for food afterwards. Uh, maybe mm. the same as last yeah. time. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to try. Hopefully, and, not the I same am... as last time. <laughs> I hope it is. <laughs> Oh boy! It's like tra- it's it's tradition now. Uh, yeah. So uh, for anyone that's listening in, just if you if you're there and you're attending, just see how many stragglers get picked up on the way, and yeah. Um, basically, yeah. don't let someone into your car unless you know them for at least three weeks beforehand, or you know someone else that knows yes. them. Don't just let anyone in your car because they say that they know something. And check, <laughs> check with the person they say proof. they know. <laughs> yeah, just yeah. Do you know this person? Chain? No, I don't. <laughs> yes. Um, but yeah, so yeah, chill card. It's going to be awesome. Come and say hello <laughs> if you're there. Please, yeah, please do. I know we sort of we didn't really have a complaint about it. We, we, we said about you know being drained at the end of it. Mm. We are drained at the end of it, but it, it is 100 percent worth yeah, it, yeah. and and it is it is really nice. It's always it is always nice for people to come and talk to us and. Uh, chat to us about our stuff and chat to us about your stuff mm-hmm. and, um, and and yeah, it, like like Dave said earlier, it is kind of one of those rare occurrences where we are going to get recognised mm. and it's nice <laughs> to to talk to people yeah. and stuff. So please do come and say hello. And if, um, if Pickle shakes your hand and just slowly pull, slowly pulls you forward and won't let go and just keeps on asking you <laughs> relentless questions, just seek help. Um, uh, have have a panic button and then <laughs> yeah everyone take your whistle yeah. um, and some mace 
That's amazing. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know. Is that what 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 is the plan for the hobby clinic? Am I on there all day, you, or am uh, I on there for a set you, time? You or? are like the honorary guest. You you basically have free reign to do whatever. I just do yeah, what I basically. want. Basically, you are you no. you are there for the meet and greet. I mean, obviously, I basically I was saying to anyone that's coming to the hobby clinic, I was like, you can use it as a base of operations if you want to just mm-hmm. sit down and chill out and paint for a bit. You can. Mm-hmm. It's completely cool. I basically I've got I've got to give judge a space. Moggy's going to be on for the first hour, and then after mm-hmm. that, it's kind of free game for anyone that wants to do it. So if anyone wants mm-hmm. to take a break, yeah. they can come and chill out there and um, stuff like that. Uh, so yeah, that's the hobby clinic. It's it's a little sanctuary safe haven of not having shiny syndrome thrust in your face, and you can just talk to people and interact. Sort nice. Of thing. Nice. Well, there we go. Chillcom 2023. Come and join us. Be there or be square Yee. or something. Yee. Um Where is it? I think that brings us. It's in Sheffield, in Ecclesfield <laughs> School. First of uh, April. When do the doors open? Uh, 10 o'clock. 10, 10 o'clock 10, till 10, 4 yeah. o'clock. 10 till 4. So, uh, for the guys on the painting clink, you can actually arrive beforehand. I'll let you in early so you can see stuff beforehand if you wish. Well, I'll be going with you again, yeah, probably. Yeah, yeah. Nice. Seems like you're sleeping in my son's yes, bed. Yes, that's not in a weird my way. My son's not there. <laughs> uh. My son's not there. <laughs> um, yeah. Um, so yeah, come and, come and see us at Chillcon. It's going to be fantastic. Uh, and with that, that brings us to the end of the podcast. Because mm. uh, once again, we've not sorted Snack Attack no, out. Uh, but- I've not read any books. No. Well, I've, um, I've, I read a wonderful book called The Subtle Art of Not Giving a Fuck. And it, nice. Oh, I've got it, that. It's amazing. It is a, such a... It's so good. It's just learning where to put your fucks and where who to give a fuck to. <laughs> yeah, honestly, I read that a few years ago. It was an eye-opener. Right? Mm-hmm. And like, like a lot, that's why I've not got as many friends now as I yeah. used to. Have, because <laughs> I, I, I stopped putting up with bullshit mm-hmm. and they didn't like that. And I was like, don't care. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, it's a wonderful book if anyone wants to read it by Mark Manson, I believe is it. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, but yeah. Um, so there, there we go. Um, we'll go around, Robin, uh, Dave. As you are our uh, special invited guest, um, we'll ask you first. Uh, what's your name and where do you come from? No, uh, where can we find you uh, on the World Wide Web if people want to check out you and your stuff? Uh, you can find me on YouTube as MS Paints. The algorithm actually brings me up when you search for it now. Uh, thankfully, Microsoft discontinued Yay. MS Paint with their latest revision of Windows. <laughs> so it's kind of, I'm winning the metrics now. I'm completely winning the metrics. You're, you're beating Microsoft. I've outlasted, outlasted Microsoft. Yeah, yeah. What, what version of Windows are we on now? Windows 11? Is it Windows 11? Uh, 11. 11. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Christ. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm still on Windows XP, well, Windows guys. 10 and Windows 11 were all right, yeah. so Windows 12 will be shit. Yeah. yeah. That's usually how it works. Guaranteed. Vista 2, mate, even though I love Vista. Uh, yeah, you can find me on <laughs> Mr. Two Electric Boogaloo. Absolutely, yeah. Uh, you can find me on MS Paints on various different socials. Yeah, that's it. That's very easy to, very easy that one. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, very good. Elston. Oh, you can find me lurking under a rock in most subtle places. Um, yeah, Elston Nation on YouTube, uh, Elston Instagram. El- <laughs> uh, yeah if anyone wants to know where Elsa Nation came from I used to be in a band and they just took the piss so and that's where Elsa Nation came from uh, and it became Elsa Nation Irrigation Plantation uh, various other Asians that you can think of uh, came to my name but yeah various other what? what? various other Asians easy Oh, Asians. 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 Not Asians. Not Asians. Asians. <laughs> Asians. Not Asians. It's like the Badgers, Badgers thing all over again. Don't stop. <laughs> uh, yeah, Elston Nation Mini on Facebook, Elston Nation on mm-hmm. YouTube, Instagram. Yeah, you can find me around there somewhere or another. How about you, El Capitan Picard? Uh, yeah, as usual, you can find me on the Pickle Jar on YouTube, uh, which, again, if you search for me, it stops bringing up uh, channels about actually pickling <laughs> stuff. <laughs> it now just brings me up if you search for the Pickle Jar. Um, uh, you can find me, if you search for Pickle Jar on Twitter and Instagram mm. and TikTok and Facebook, you'll find me um, as well. Um, yeah, that's about it. Um, what? Yeah, there we go. 
End of a podcast. Yay. Thanks for coming on, Dave. I know it's uh, early in the morning, but um, I mean, I pick the time slot, been, so it's my it's own been, fucking fault. <laughs> <laughs> it's been nice having you on. We have been saying we're going to do this for ages, and mm-hmm. then we just haven't done. Yeah. Um, so thank you for coming on. We are going to try and get more guests on mm. uh, this year, uh, and hopefully, I know we say this every podcast, but hopefully, Stop. because the Stop. show is done Stop. after Stop. today. Stop. We'll be back. Stop. We will. We will be. We'll be back to more of a regular. Stop talking about the future. <laughs> I have to talk about the future. I can't talk about the past. You can talk about the past. That's fine. No, it's when, no. The past is done. When you it's talk gone. about the future, you start signing job, yourself into things of disappointment. So <laughs> you're a disappointment. Yeah. Fucking hell. I don't, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> On that note, uh, this is the end of the podcast. We gotta go. <laughs> um, I don't know how to. I don't. I think, that, to be honest, I don't think you can top yeah. that. We'll just end that on Elston telling me <laughs> off for pl- planning things. Yeah, planning things <laughs> and not executing them. You're an executing them. Well done. Fucking. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> get get wrecked. <Rex>, <laughs> Fuck me. It's getting petty in here.